Hello doctors today let's talk about the pupils dance what do i mean about the pupils dance the eye the pupil when it gets small this is called as meiosis and when it gets big this is called as mitriasis this process can be physiological as well as pathological and this can occur many times in a day that's why i call this as the pupil stance now let's first see about the anatomy then let's go into the mechanism of how the pupil gets small and big then let's see about the conditions that causes meiosis and mitriasis first this is an eye and i have marked the part the blue color here is the iris and the black color one is the pupil the pupil which allows the light which allows light from outside to enter inside the eye now let's zoom in a bit and draw this virtually now this is the iris and pupil in the center and uh, around the pupil there is circular muscles after it there is like there are some muscles which are radiating out now these circular muscles are called as sphincter pupillae this sphincter pupillae is supplied by the oculomotor nerve the parasympathetic nerves run via the oculomotor nerve to reach the sphincter pupillae now the muscles that were radiating out the one in the green color these muscles are called as dilator pupillae this dilator pupillae is supplied by the sympathetic nerves remember doctors sphincter pupillae is supplied by parasympathetic the dilator pupillae is supplied by the sympathetic nerves now let's see the action the sphincter pupillae constantly tries to make the pupil small that is meiosis while the dilator pupillae constantly tries to make the pupil big that is mitriasis normally these two actions cancel each other so the pupil is in its normal position but when there is a need or any pathology one can overcome the other so the pupil can become small or the pupil can get dilated let's see those conditions now this is the eye and we all just as as i just said now the cranial nerve 3 which carries the parasympathetic nerves supplies the sphincter pupillae that is this muscles now when there is a stimulation of the cranial nerve 3 or the parasympathetic fibers there is additional stimulation to the uh, sphincter pupillae muscles so let's see what happens now there is additional stimulation so there is more force trying to make the pupil small so the pupil gets small this is called as active meiosis cause the sphincter pupillae muscle is actively stimulated causing meiosis that is shortening a uh, small pupils now let's see the other case this is the eye and we all know that the sympathetic nerve supplies the dilator pupillae muscles now when there is an inhibition of the sympathetic nerve the supply to the dilator pupillae is cut so let's see what happens the so the force that was pulling the pupil out trying to make it big is now lost so just the force at the sphincter pupillae is now going to make the pupil small this is called as passive meiosis because the pupil is getting small that is meiosis it is not due to the action of sphincter pupillae it is due to loss of dilator pupillae so this is passive process 
this is passive meiosis. Now let's see the next case. This is the eye and we know that sympathetic nerve supplies dilatory pupillae. Now if we if we stimulate sympathetic nerve more, this causes further stimulation of the dilatory pupillae. Let's see what happens. There is more more action of, done by the dilatory pupillae. So the pupil gets big. This this process is done actively by causing stimulation of the dilatory pupillae and the pupil is big. So this is active mitriasis. Now the next case this is the eye and the cranial nerve 3 parasympathetic supplies sphincter pupillae this yellow round muscles. Now if there is inhibition of the cranial nerve 3 or if there is parasympathetic inhibition there is inhibition or loss of sphincter pupillae innervation. So let's see what happens. The action of sphincter pupillae is lost so only the action of dilatory pupillae is seen which is mitriasis. This is called as passive mitriasis because the sphincter pupillae innervation is cut and so the pupil gets big. This is a passive process. This is not actively done by the dilatory pupillae. It is due to the loss of innervation of the sphincter pupillae. So this is passive process. Now these are the mechanisms by which there is mitriasis and meiosis. Let's see some of the cases which causes this meiosis means short small pupils. It can occur in organophosphates poisoning. Organophosphates are substances which increase acetylcholine. If there is increased acetylcholine, there is increased parasympathetic. If increased parasympathetic, then the action is meiosis. Acute uveitis. There is inflammation in acute uveitis. So there is ciliary muscle spasm. Ciliary muscles are muscles present inside the eye. When these muscles, uh, when these muscles undergo spasm, there is meiosis. And sunlight. This this can be explained by just putting a torch light in front of the pupil. We can see the pupil will constrict. This is because the eye does not want more light to enter inside because there can be damage inside. So what the eye does physiologically is it reduces the size of pupil. So the light entering the eye will, is reduced and so the damage is reduced. Hypermetropia that is farsightedness. In these patients the eye is usually small. So is the pupil. Pilocarpine. It is a drug which increases acetylcholine. So increase parasympathetic and meiosis. Argyll Robertson pupil. This is seen in patients with syphilis. This is also called as the prostitute's pupil. In this, the patient, when when you shine a, shine a torch in front of the patient's pupil, the pupil does not react. But when the patient sees some objects nearby, the pupil starts to constrict. This is Argyll Robertson pupil. On accommodation, accommodation is when you see an object nearby and you try to focus on that object, the eyes, eyes causes meiosis. The eyes constricts and tries to focus on that object. This is accommodation. And in neonates, the eyes are very small and so is the pupil. An important topic, Horner's syndrome. Horner's syndrome is loss of sympathetic supply, especially to the face. So, if there is loss of sympathetic supply, the parasympathetic overtakes and causes meiosis. These patients also have ptosis and anhydrosis.
that is absence of sweating in the face now let's see the conditions causing mydriasis datura poisoning it is it is a flower causing increase in acetyl coal uh, increase in uh, sympathetic supply so if increase in sympathetic then there is mydriasis angle closure glaucoma when the pupil becomes very big it can block the angles through which the aqueous humor drains so if the angle is blocked then the aqua- aqueous humor accumulates inside the eye causing increase in pressure inside the eye this increase in pressure is called as glaucoma just like the sunlight opposite to is dark light when you enter a dark room you try to focus more that is because you want to you want more light to enter into your eyes so that you can see sim- so that you can see things so what the body does is it opens up the pupil so that more light can enter inside and you can see more in the dark light myopia myopia is near sightedness these patients have large eyeballs so is the pupil atropine atropine is increases sympathetic so mydriasis cranial nerve 3 palsy if the cranial nerve 3 is uh, if the cranial nerve 3 has some pathologies such as strokes ischemia it can cause loss of loss of parasympathetic supply so this is passive mydriasis and adystonic pupil this is parasympathetic denervation when when the nerves of the parasympathetic are denervated the sympathetic overtakes and causes mydriasis this that's all for the meiosis and the mydriasis thank you doctors